Hello everyone, my name is Hank. Today I'm going to talk to you about removing your flash off of your Canon camera. We, we are not talking about removing the flash and not using it. We are talking about removing the flash and use it off the camera for the purpose of improving your picture. Now when you um, mount the flash on top of the camera like that and you shoot, the light is going to hit your subject. Let's assume we're going to take a picture of a person. The light's going to hit the person's face um, straight on and as a result the picture is going to be flat. Everything's even lit and that sometimes not a good thing because um, you need a little bit of depth you know 3D effect type of a thing to kind of convey the sense of depth and uh, flat light doesn't do that to you very well. In order to have a 3D effect you would want the light source to be off at a certain angle and it is generally accepted that a good uh, light position would be 45 degrees from the camera to the subject and also 45 degrees up so it uh, doesn't really matter what source of light in in this case we're talking about a flash at the source of light but it's equally important if you use the sun as the source and that's generally the accepted method and would give you the most satisfying result okay so now if I am able to convince you of having the light source at a certain angle in this case we're talking about 45 degrees so how the next question would be <clears throat> how are we going to achieve that how are we going to control the flash and uh, <clears throat> It well, depends on what kind of camera do you have too. Okay, so it's really easy if you own one of these Canon cameras. You own a T3i, T4i, T5i, T6i, uh, or a 60d, 70d, 80d, or a 7d or a 7d Mark II. Those cameras you see, the, it has a, a pop-up flash. And the pop-up flash, okay, like in this case the 7D Mark II, is capable of not only shooting out and create light for you to take picture using flash, but it also acts as a controller for your off-camera flash, like this one. It just happened to be a, a Canon uh, 600EXRT flash. Alright, so today I am going to show you how to do just that. Before we uh, delve into exactly how to set up for the use of remote control of the, the flash, um, I'm going to give you a very quick demonstration you will see two pulses of light first from the flash and then from this this is a demonstration therefore you will be able to see the difference uh, when you're actually shooting it it went on so fast that you won't be able to see two flashes you just see one okay so the flash sent out pauses of light it does two things the first one is to communicate with this uh, flash to tell it uh, what the camera settings will be and what the camera or in this case us the photographer tells the camera to do with this flash basically how you want to set manual mode what power setting uh, or ETTL okay that's number one number two of course to tell the flash to fire Okay, um, it's that simple. Okay, I'm going to show you how to set up your camera so that you can use the off-camera flash. Okay, so you go to the menu and um, you look for the red menu here with the flash control. 
and you want to highlight it like that hit into a set and then you go down to built-in flash setting hit enter okay uh, and it will show you that the wireless function here is disabled that's the default so what you want to do is to turn that guy on it gives you three choices okay the f uh, the first choice is basically telling you that you can have both the built-in flash which is this symbol and the remote flash which is the off-camera big flash uh, both of them is going to go off at a certain ratio so if you hit set when that's highlighted you will go and then another menu pops up is going to allow you to control the ratio here by the way let's talk about the channel a little bit the default is channel 1 so everybody if you don't do anything is going to set to channel 1 so you make sure that your your flash also shows channel 1 which happens also the flash default now the only time you may want to, to change that is if you are in a room of four, uh, a room full of photographers and everybody's using flash and everybody's set into channel 1 you have a pretty fun time controlling the other guy's flashes but you won't like it so much if he's controlling your flashes so in that case you might want to change it to a different channel and um, it allow four channels one two three four okay otherwise just leave it to channel one now this is a flash exposure conversation you can compensate for for your flash in this case both of the built-in and the the flash is going to be controlled at the same time for the same now the the ratio as you see here that is the off-camera flash that's a built-in flash and, and you hit enter and you can move it for example if I move to 4 to 1 and hit enter and what that is telling the camera um, to tell the flashes is that the re remote off-camera flash is going to put out eight times as much power as the pop-up flash okay the default is one to one so that's totally up to you on the reverse you can go the opposite right? except that as you can see the opposite um, actually it doesn't let you because I guess built-in flash got limited power is already put out all of it can so you you can only tell the remote flash to put out more power basically okay that is the first wireless function mode let's uh, explore the second one what the second one is telling you you only see one symbol of the remote flash the off-camera flash and, and that's exactly what it means is like when you fire this thing only the remote flash would put out the light okay even though it's kind of misleading because the pop-up flash is still put out light but that light is just a controlling light and not the light to light up the subject so keep that in mind you you will still see it flash but it it doesn't really um, uh, do anything in terms of exposure okay uh, similarly in this mode you can go um, since you're gonna fire everything oh the firing group let's explore that okay in the firing group uh, the default is like you fire all of the groups or you can set your slaves uh, flashes remote flashes they call that slaves and you can tell the slaves to um, the camera to tell the slaves to shoot all of the group A and all of the group B okay if you choose this or you can tell the camera to shoot all group A and B as a ratio that you can set and also an independent group C that's um, so you can actually control um, a lot of different flashes as long as you set them uh, and later I'm going to tell you how to set the flash um, 
you know, two different groups. And uh, in this case, you can set it to group A, B, and C, and it's going to fire uh, these group um, as you choose. It. Okay. So that is basically by itself. So you do have a lot of control. Now, not all cameras have all of the functions, mind you. The 7D Mark II is one of the the, the higher-end models, so it actually offers you a little bit more than some of the lower-end, like a T3i. You probably won't see all of these options, but you get the idea. Okay, so the third one would be both flashes, built, uh, the built-in and the, um, the remote flash. Okay, and you go in here, as you can see, uh, it gives you the option of firing all of them, or group A and group B, or A, B, and C, just like the other one. So, a lot of different options that you can do. Okay, so, um, what I should do is go up back he up here, and as you can see, we have explored all three options, and that's about it. Okay, remember default is disabled. You go in there and choose one of them. I, I think if you only have one remote flash, it doesn't really matter uh, what mode you, you choose. Okay, it'll work equally well. The only two significant difference is like this one versus that one. Okay, because this one you use your built in flash as a source of light. Here you don't. Okay, normally I would prefer if you only have one flash, you set it at 45 degrees, and I would set it to maybe uh, either 2 to 1 or 4 to 1 power. You know, so the remote flash got more power, and the pop up flash is only to serve as a fill. You don't want it to be too powerful because it will make your subject flat, which is what we are trying to avoid by moving the, the, the flash off uh, camera. So you don't really want to do that, but you, you do want to have to use it to fill. So I would recommend um, to start out with is to choose the first option and set the power. Here I'll set it just to show you. Okay, set it to 2 to 1 or maybe 3 to 1 okay and um, that way um, you have just a little bit of built, um, built in flash to fill in the shadows and I think that will look really nice and that's about it okay I'm going to set, um, show you how to set up um, the flash as a slave unit I happen to use a um, Canon uh, 600EXRT, so it might look different from your model. Um, I suggest that you read the instruction manual on how to use it. But basically, uh, when you first turn the power on, it looks generally like that, and basically, it kind of be ready. Uh, to function as an on-camera flash unit uh, as default. So in order for you to set it up so that it will be a slave basically that's a purpose is to set it uh, into a slave uh, in this case an optical slave. Okay, This um, flash unit happened to have uh, two different modes of uh, control uh, one is the optical slave, which all Canon flashes have, and also a radio control mode, which only the 600 EXRT has. Uh, so th this unit happened to have both the optical and radio control. Uh, today, uh, with the pop-up flash, as a controller, only can do the optical control. So that's what we want to do for this. Um, unit here, the only button you need to do is uh, to control, to turn it into a slave is this one. Uh, 
I waited too long. This thing turned itself off. Sorry about that. Okay. So I press a button once. And um, this thing turned into the symbol here, which means that it's, it is radio control. That's not what I want. It's also a master. So I keep recycling this one. So it goes into a slave mode, but again, this symbol is the wrong one. You want to look for a lightning bolt symbol, because that is radio control slave. You don't want that either. So you go over here. Now we see the right symbol. However, it is a master for that mode, so you're basically telling this um, this flash um, to be the master. That's not what we want. We want it to be a slave. So uh, here, we got it, finally. Okay, um, you got the lightning bolt. You, you, uh, you got it as a slave. And, and it shows up as group A. And it also uh, show up as the uh, channel 1, which is the default channel. Remember, we talked about channel 1 being set with a camera. The camera and the flash has to be uh, set to the same channel in order for it to work. It's that simple. And um, now, in order to change the channel, you have to press the menu button here. And then and then the word uh, channel showed up here that means this button is the channel button now it's highlighted and you can change the channel here which is from 1 to 4 we are going to set it back to 1 okay hit set so that's how you change the channel you go back to the main menu with the main menu if you want to change it to a different group you hit this button here change to B to C and uh, back to A okay for optical you only have three groups A B C so so you can change it like that so now this one is ready to be fired off using the um, built-in flash and that's it that's all you have to do okay so last part but, um, I'm gonna do a quick demo. Just a simple shoot off. I'm gonna shoot at the camera. As you can see, the, the remote flash flash. I set it to uh, three to one power. This one three power. This one one power. But that doesn't really matter. And everything set to ET tip. There you have it. It's actually pretty easy to get the flash off of the camera uh, without any additional equipment that you need to buy. How cool is it? Thank you.